Hello, what we're going to be testing here is the high pass filter circuit. And this is the one from Lab 2 for ELE 8940. And you can notice right away that my input frequency is 100 kilohertz coming into the circuit. And I'm using 210 nanofarads, a 1K, and a 500 ohm resistor. So right now, the input is at, and let's check the amplitude here. There, it's indicating 400 millivolts peak to peak. So that's 200 millivolts peak. And if I want to find out the RMS value, I would take the 200 millivolts peak, multiply it by 0 0.707, which is one over the square root of two. And that gives me 141 millivolts. And I can confirm that channel one is 100 kilohertz, 141 millivolts. So everything's as expected. And since we're at 100 kilohertz, we're much over the critical frequency. So my maximum output is 121 millivolts. So the next thing I want to do is to find out what the critical frequency will be as I run through the, the different frequencies. And to figure that out, it's that maximum amplitude times 0 0.707, 1 over the square root of 2. And if you do that calculation, it gives you about 86 millivolts. So that's what we're going to be looking for as the critical frequency. So I'm going to go back to frequency and I'm going to um, change the frequency and then do the, the simulation. Okay, this doesn't work very well as if you try to, and you can go downwards here as well. So we're at 80 kilohertz. I'm going to run the simulation and um, the output signal changes a little bit. What I'm going to do here is keep going down. So I'll use the arrows this time. Go down to 65, let's say 60 kilohertz, and then I'll run the simulation again. All right, at uh, 80 kilohertz, you'll notice that the input is still the same value. We're, or, sorry, 60 kilohertz, but our output is dropped to 120 millivolts. Now let's keep dropping down, but I probably have to uh, restart the simulation as I do this. Yeah, I will get an error if I don't do that. So I'm going to remove that error. So here I'm at 45 kilohertz and I'm getting uh, very close to what I expected for the critical frequency, which is 88 millivolts in this case. And we'll go down a little bit more. So now we're at 10 kilohertz and the output amplitude is way down. Now it's uh, 18, 19 millivolts approximately. And we'll go even further down in frequency. Now we're down to 500 hertz and you can see the blue channel, which is channel two, our output is at 70 microvolts. Very, very small. Okay, so you can use the Agilent function generator. I'd say the Tektronix is the best. Okay, and let's show you how to make some changes on the, the scope here. I'm going to stop the simulation. And if you want to change the volts per division, you just click your mouse either to the left or to the right of that line. And you can see that the volts per division will change. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for now. And if you want to change the time per division, you just click to the left or to the right of the white line on the dial. Now, one of the things I normally do is to, um, you can do a s auto or run stop, okay? And it'll produce a, a new waveform after you do the simulation. You turn the simulation on. Sometimes I just do single and that freezes it, okay? It's not perfect, but it's pretty good, okay? So just single will do that. If you need to change the position of the signal on the scope, this is the dial that you will use. And you can see that it brings it up or down. So probably having it separated is a good idea. And it also tells you, um, it also tells you the position for the time, the position or the value for the channel vertical setting and the channel horizontal setting. The way that I got the measurements here, is I can show you that, uh, there's a button here called measure and if I wanted to add another measurement you just 
let's you just click on these buttons here and so channel one is shown as none right now for that button and I can go to change it to channel two for example and the type will be here and the type that I want you select down here so you've got frequency Sorry, I'm hitting the wrong button there. Frequency, period, mean value, peak to peak value, and cycles are the RMS of the signal. And once you've got that all set up, just click on measure again and you get all the measurements on the screen. Okay, so this is our 741 amplifier and you can see that this is the way you're going to build the circuit and test and troubleshoot the circuit. It should work out to exactly the way it does in the simulation. Hopefully it does for you. Thank you.